Today we will recap a mystery thriller movie, in which a husband allows his wife to hug other men. To know this movie name watch till the end. The film starts with a man, whose name is Vic, he is riding his bike home after a ride through the woods. As he approaches the door, he takes off his pants. When he looks up, his wife Melinda is staring at him. In the next scene, we learn that they have a young daughter. She is singing along to her favorite song while her mother annoyingly yells at her. The man enters the room, where his wife asks him to choose a dress for her. Later on, his wife asks him to grab her black shoes for her, which he does happily. Melinda tells Vic that she loves him very much. Soon after, the couple leaves their daughter with the babysitter to go to the party. Melinda and Vic visit with their friends. Melinda runs into Joel, an old friend, and starts talking to him. Vic notices her actions but remains silent. Melinda takes his friend into a private space and begins kissing him right away. Vic is aware of what is happening, but all he can do is watch as she performs these actions. Even though they look at each other, Melinda continues to enjoy her fantasies. Vic's friend Mary then approaches him and shares her worries about Joel and Melinda's relationship. Vic however, reassures her that he doesn't give a damn about the situation, and that he still loves Melinda for who she is. When this is not enough, Melinda begins to dance on top of a piano to get everyone's attention. She then starts playing the piano, making everyone happy. Vic smiles at her despite her strange behavior as if nothing just happened. Shortly after, Joel comes to Vic and expresses his gratitude for letting him spend time with Melinda. Vic tells him to recall a man called Martin McRae, who recently got missing, and he was Melinda's previous lover. Vic makes the implication that he is the one who caused him to disappear. Joel thinks it's a joke, but Vic assures him that it will become obvious if he keeps doing it. Joel leaves the party without saying goodbye to Melinda because he is afraid. Melinda does not appreciate his actions towards her friend. She asked him if he said anything to Joel. Vic denies threatening or saying anything to Joel, and the couple returns home. At home, Melinda takes off her top and begins to wander the house naked, while the babysitter is still present. Vic asks Melinda to get inside her room. Soon after, Vic comes up to Melinda and helps her in taking off her clothes. Here it is made clear that they actually have a mutual understanding, that allows Melinda to love and hug whoever she likes. In return, she cannot divorce Vic and has to stay with him, because Vic is worried about his family. A few days later, Vic gets together with his friends, where he learns that everyone is aware of the threat he made to Joel by telling a joke about Martin McRae. They also explain that Melinda is a sick woman because she does all this in front of Vic. Back at home Melinda gets to know about this as well, and tells Vic to apologize to Joel. Then she invites him to dinner. Joel knocks on the door on Friday and is greeted by Vic. He inquires nervously if Melinda is at home, to which Vic again jokes that she isn't. Vic tells him that they will talk and enjoy some seafood later. Later at the table, Vic makes Joel a grilled cheese sandwich, while Melinda begins eating it in a way that seems to be intended to irritate his husband. She sends Vic to take her daughter to bed and tell her bedtime stories. Later Vic encounters Melinda and Joel hugging each other. One day, Vic and Melinda are having a conversation with writer Don Wilson and his wife Kelly at a party. Don calls him a killer and jokes about Martin McRae. Later seeing Trixie and Melinda dancing, Vic asks Kelly to dance, and after she agrees they start dancing. This makes Melinda jealous and she continues watching Vic dance. On their way home, Melinda asks Vic, if he finds Kelly more attractive than her and if he wants to hug her. Vic admits, then she tries to prove herself better than Kelly by kissing his bull. Then after reaching home Vic hugs her. Next day, Vic and Melinda are watching their daughter play. His bank calls him with information regarding Melinda's bank account. He learns that she sent a piano player a check for $3,000. Vic then starts looking into this person's background more. Vic finds Charlie and visits him in person after doing some research. Unexpectedly, Melinda also arrives at the restaurant smiling and talking with Charlie. One night, Melinda does not return home and spends the night with Charlie when she returns home the next morning. Vic welcomes Melinda and asks where she was. She is looking pretty drunk. He approaches Melinda and begs her to stop seeing Charlie for the sake of their daughter Trixie. Melinda refuses and tells Vic that Trixie was his decision, not hers. She also tells Vic about her night with Charlie and how he hugged her. Next week, they go to a party at their friend's house. Surprisingly, Charlie has also been invited to the party and Melinda goes to greet him. 
she brings Charlie to meet Vic. Later, when everyone is in the pool and Vic is watching Melinda get closer to Charlie, Vic gets jealous seeing Melinda. Suddenly, it begins to rain, and everyone runs inside the house. They start to enjoy the party once again. Charlie is nowhere to be seen, so Melinda tries to check on him. She sees him dead inside the pool and starts to scream. Seeing this, everyone runs outside and tries to rescue him from the pool and try to revive him, but unfortunately nothing works out. As the police show up later and immediately begin questioning everyone there, Melinda accuses Vic of drowning Charlie. Vic denies it, so an officer takes him into a room for questioning. Satisfied with Vic's detailed statement that Charlie was drunk and clinging to the pool, the officers leave. Vic later asks Melinda if she is scared of him. She says she is not afraid because he took Charlie's life because of her. Later on, when Vic is riding his bicycle, he imagines Melinda and another guy together, and also sees the flashes and him taking his life. The next day, while Vic is returning home on his mountain bike he realizes that a car is following him. One day while Vic is at Trixie's school, he runs into Kelly, who tells him that Don still thinks he killed Charlie and is making weird theories with Melinda. Later, they extend a dinner invitation to Don and Kelly. Shortly after, Vic takes Don to his basement and asks Don to stop telling people that he killed Charlie. Don who still believes Vic killed Charlie, asks him to take a lie detector test, and Vic agrees. After a few days, Vic can be seen walking casually in the market where he notices the same car that was following him. He then turns to look around and notices Melinda chatting with a random person. He interrupts her conversation, and the stranger goes on to identify himself as David, a psychiatrist. Vic realizes that Melinda and Don have hired David as a private investigator to keep an eye on him. Vic shows up at Don's house shortly after, and claims that Don hired a private investigator to spy on him. On his way home one day, Vic sees Melinda enjoying her time exploring the city with another man. The man is Melinda's ex-boyfriend from college named Tony. The next day, Melinda invites Tony to her house for dinner, and tells Vic that Tony is the first American boy she hugged. Vic becomes upset upon hearing this, but he keeps a straight face and behaves friendly with Tony. Vic encounters them going upstairs in his bedroom. He sees that she is doing her usual things and they catch each other's eye. After a few days, Vic forces Tony to sit in his jeep and informs him that Melinda wants to meet him. He takes him to a location that is very remote from the city. He keeps asking him questions about Melinda and his dating history. Vic stops the car after going far into the woods and throws a stone at Tony, striking him in the forehead. Before Tony can say anything, Vic strikes him again with another big stone making him fall from the cliff. Tony ultimately dies. Vic then drags Tony's dead body into the river and sinks it by tying some stones to his body, but not before pulling out his wallet. The following day, Melinda suggests to Vic that they go on a picnic with Trixie at their hiking location, and Vic accepts. The location of the picnic is the same one where Vic got rid of Tony. Later, he accidentally sees that the body can be seen floating on top of the river. Melinda informs Vic that she left her scarf at the picnic location while returning home, to which Vic replies that he will get it back first thing in the morning. At night he gets to know that she is talking to another man called Don. That night, she tells him she loves him and asks him to sleep in her room. He returns to the same location the following day to correct his mistake, while Melinda is able to discover Tony's wallet inside Vic's workplace. Vic is trying to push Tony's body down into the water, where suddenly Don arrives. Don asks what he's doing in the river. Vic tries to avoid the conversation and make excuses but Don notices Tony's arm floating. Don immediately gets into his car and tells Vic that he is going to jail. Vic follows Don on his mountain bike but fails to catch up with him. Vic then takes a shortcut and falls in front of Don's car, causing him to take a sharp turn and crash into the river killing him instantly. Vic goes back home in the final scene. There Melinda is waiting for him, sitting on the staircase like at the beginning of the movie. She stares at him for a while and finally reveals that she found Tony's wallet. The movie ends with Melinda burning Tony's wallet indicating that she is staying with Vic and Trixie. So this was the story of 2022 film Deepwater. If you like the story, then do watch the full film.